Capture one. All troopers are captured. GG, guys. GG. Alive or dead. Return into base. So, at the end of last year, I did a retrospective on the 2005 first-person shooter Starship Troopers. In response to the surprise announcement of a brand new game being developed for the franchise called Starship Troopers Extermination. It was a game with a lot of ambition that the technology of the time wasn't quite up to realising just yet. Because, I mean, rendering hundreds of swarming arachnids is a little bit more demanding than hundreds of shambling zombies. But just a little. Even though the game wasn't amazing, I'd always felt that there was a lot of potential with this franchise when it came to video games, and I'm surprised it's taken this long to have another attempt, especially given the rise in popularity of horde shooters like Left 4 Dead and the absurdly fun Earth Defense Force series. But here we are now almost six months later, and Starship Troopers Extermination is now out on early access for Steam. Developed by a studio called Offworld Industries, Extermination is currently a 16-player co-op first-person shooter that sees you and a bunch of other players retaking and defending a massive outpost from endless hordes of arachnid bugs. Given the early access nature of this release, currently there isn't really a whole lot of content going on here, but what there is so far does offer quite a lot of potential. There are three playable classes available to choose from at the moment, with the Hunter, Bastion and the Operator, or essentially the Assault, Heavy and Support classes. Each class starts with the Marauder MK1 straight out of the films, and then as you rank up each class, a few more specific guns become unlocked, like a Heavy Machine Gun, which probably has the worst recoil on a gun I've seen in the game for some time, along with a pretty powerful sniper rifle and a grenade launcher. Each class also has special abilities too, like the Hunter has jump jets that allow you to leap tall cliffs in a single bound. Well, sometimes anyway. The Bastion has a siege mode that increases your defense and accuracy, while the Operator has the ability to revive fallen teammates. Groovy. None of these classes are anything new in any way if you're familiar with online shooters, but they're straightforward enough and don't play so drastically from one another that it feels like you're getting a completely different experience playing as them. Which may be a good thing or a bad thing depending on how you like your online experiences. I've never really been into big online shooters like Overwatch or Destiny. I don't even have time to explain why I don't have time to explain. So for me personally, keeping all this stuff relatively simple works well for me. Carry on, Frank. In this current build there is only one map to play on a devastated outpost on the planet Valaka, which might initially seem disappointing until you realise it's actually quite a massive map to work with. The game is running on the Unreal 4 engine, which probably doesn't come as much of a surprise these days, and while I wouldn't say that Extermination looks amazing, it most definitely gets the job done and absolutely nails the aesthetic of the film pretty close to perfectly. There are graphical issues here and there, like the expected texture streaming issues sometimes, as well as a bit of visual pop-in on effects in the distance like shadows and geometry. I also found that the performance would dip sometimes, particularly at the end of rounds, but this may also have been due to the fact I was recording footage at the same time. Hi, Mike from the future here. So yeah, I played a few more games after I did my bulk recording without my capture software running, and my frame rate became almost perfectly stable. So the game is pretty well optimized I'd say and I'm running the game with 16 gigs of RAM and an RTX 3050. With that said, when the action really gets going, the game can look really impressive as there is heavy use of massive particle effects like dust and smoke that kick up from explosions, as well as flying body parts as the bugs gib into pieces, leaving lots of green blood all over the ground. It can really start to feel like a war zone during these moments when you've got bugs coming from all sides and all these effects are going off. It also looks incredibly cool how the bugs will burrow up from out of the ground, which is both faithful to the film and a nice way of giving you a heads up on incoming waves of bugs. Come on, you you wanna live forever? The core gameplay loop of Extermination so far revolves around three different objectives that are randomly placed around the map, with these being retaking a particular zone back from the bugs, mining for resources that you need to escort back to a particular fuel station, before culminating in a final base defense against an endless swarm of bugs. 
The retaking objectives are straightforward enough. You head to that spot on the map and just kill everything that spawns to unlock a resupply station. The mining objectives are the ones that are a bit more time consuming, as there are usually three different mining zones that spawn on the map, and they first have to be found and then constructed. Once constructed, you then have to wait for the resources to be mined, during which time bugs will start making frequent attacks and try to destroy the mining equipment. Once the resource canister is filled, it then needs to be carried back to either the resupply station or the Ark inside the outpost that you will later be defending, and whoever is carrying the canister is no longer able to defend themselves, which is where the team player becomes paramount, as the bugs will start to chase that player down like seagulls. Sometimes this particular objective can be a little bit tedious depending on how far away the mining sources are from wherever you have to take them to. Sometimes it's only across a small chasm, other times it's from one side of the map to the other. And God shits in my dinner once again. On high difficulties, other bonus objectives can pop up like eradicating bug swarm somewhere else in the map, or finding hidden supplies to give you more building resources. Groovy. The final objective is always a final stand against an endless swarm of bugs, while you protect the Ark that you may or may not have had to get resources for, while it does some scanning. It's here where the game's building mechanics come into play, and as much as I loathe any kind of comparison to Fortnite, building mechanics actually do make an awful lot of sense in a Starship Troopers game. You basically get assigned a limited area around the Ark to build up walls, turrets, and other kind of defenses, and you have about roughly 90 seconds to do so before the bug swarms start to descend on you and your team. I'd expect anyone in this unit to do the same for me. This is definitely where the game becomes the most fun and the most chaotic, as just like how Left 4 Dead's AI director would start to go nuts during the final battle of each chapter, the same thing goes here as all the different bug types start showing up to make things difficult. The defenses you build are not invincible and can be destroyed by bugs which can result in some really great emergent moments as your defenses fall and a horde of bugs start making their way in. You can repair these defenses of course with your build tool, but 90% of the time my reaction was just simply There are only 5 types of bugs in the early access build of extermination, which includes drones, the warrior bugs which are the most common, a gunner which shoots projectiles from a distance, the plasma bugs and the tiger elites which are absolute giants compared to the 2005 game where they were just armored bugs. Missing from the roster are the flying hopper bugs and the iconic tankers from the films which I'm assuming they're still working out how to fairly implement into the gameplay loop. But even with just the current lineup of bugs, the combat is still quite a lot of fun and it works well enough for a horde shooter. Things can get especially hectic when the tiger elites show up and start destroying your defenses. We're all gonna die! <laughs> I'm not entirely sure if this is a valid criticism as such, but I did notice that the actual size of the bug swarms in Extermination do seem to be a bit smaller than the one seen in the 2005 Starship Troopers game. But that game also suffered from poor performance at the time, and the downside of rendering that many bugs on screen meant the animation work had to suffer, which isn't the case here with Extermination, all the bugs animate really well for the most part. So while it would be cool to see potentially bigger swarms in future updates, I also don't want this to come at the expense of the game's performance and fluidity, especially if the game remains online only. Finally, once the Ark has done its arbitrary time thing, also just like in Left 4 Dead, you then have to make a mad dash to the extraction ship somewhere else in the map, as the bugs endlessly start spawning and swarming from literally everywhere. This usually ends up with everyone hanging around the extraction ships racking up a kill count, since you usually get about 2 minutes for everyone to get there. And that basically covers everything you can expect from this early access version of Starship Troopers Extermination. The rounds usually play out in a similar way each time, though as I said, the locations are moved around each time to keep things fresh, and I was honestly surprised that even after playing for about 6 hours or so, I still hadn't seen every area of the map. The gameplay loop is pretty simple, but given the horde shooter nature of the game, and the franchise this game is based upon, I think the simplicity actually works immensely in its favour. You're it until you're dead. Until I find somebody better. There are a small handful of issues this current build has that I'm positive will likely be panned out with future updates and the eventual full release. I did suffer from a couple of crashes, 
and a bit of an annoying connection issue when I was playing with my mate, where we'd be in a party together in the lobby, but then only one of us would actually launch into a game, leaving the other still in the lobby, but still apparently in the same party. The only workaround that we found that worked was to reboot the game, so it would be nice if that was fixed. I also wouldn't mind some kind of balancing implemented to limit how many players can have grenade launchers, because honestly, I think I've died more times from stupid players friendly fire than I have been eaten by bugs. Or perhaps they could have games with just half the player count, 8 players instead of 16. Affirmative. Overall though, I can see a huge amount of potential with this game in the future. The developers have promised that the final version will include more planets and more bugs, along with more weapons and class upgrades and community events. I do think that adding bot support should be a thing added in the launch release, and personally I'd love to see some single player content too, as that could potentially help add to the game's longevity. Even though there is a very limited amount of content available currently with this early access build, given the reasonable price tag of $35 here in New Zealand, or $25 in the US, what's here I think is a hell of a lot of fun if you're a Starship Troopers fan, and have been hankering for an updated shooter experience based on the series. It kind of goes without saying that your experience will be impacted based on how much you love the series, and the gameplay that is on offer here can lean to the repetitive side if you're not big on horde shooters, but even with just the one map currently available, me and my friend managed to stay engaged and had an absolute blast of extermination. Up until the point we realised it was almost 4am. So if that's not a sign that a game is fun, then I don't know what is. Considering the fairly reasonable asking price of the early access, I would ultimately recommend you check this game out and support the developers, as I can see a lot of really good potential for extermination. So go ahead and do your part. Anyway, that has been my early access preview of Starship Troopers Extermination. If you've also played it, let me know your thoughts in the comments. As always, stay safe out there everyone, and I'll see you all in the next video. Would you like to know more?